What have you learned from the other sports about what not to do at this U.S. Open? Well, not to take it lightly, and, and Tom and Lisa, thanks for having me on, on the show today. And it is true, Victoria's back here uh, hitting away, so hopefully it's not too noisy. But really there you go. We learned, what we learned is we've <laughs> got to take this serious and, and never take anything for granted and have great partnership and teamwork with the pro tours, but more importantly, the government, right? The federal government, the city of New York, and the state of government. There was a lot of moving parts, and we had to pull all this together to assure a, a safe and healthy tournament. There are jump conditions for tennis. It's always been that kind of sport. There was a guy named James Connors who had a Wilson T2000 racket a few years ago and leveled the way the sport was played. Are you at a point of innovation now? Is tennis ready for a new jump condition of skill and speed? Oh, I think the game has completely evolved over the years. The, the amount of athleticism is incredible. But having said that, it's a sport for all. If you think about it, tennis is one of the few sports you can start when you're five or six years old, and you can play all the way into your 80s. We host tournaments from 10 and unders to 80 and over. So it's not only the greatest athletes in the world, but it's all people can play our sport. Mike, oh, it's interesting. When you think about tennis, you think of two people at opposite sides of the court. They're going to be naturally socially distanced. What have some of the challenges been for you to bring some of these tennis professionals, the legends of the world, together at a time of the raging pandemic that you really hadn't thought about before? Yeah, it was a real lot of international cooperation and working with the pro tours. If you think about it, we have players from over 60 countries. So the dynamics we had to work with are quite a bit different than the professional leagues here in the U.S., so we had to get collaboration from several governments in Europe, not just to get the athletes in, but to assure we can get them back to Europe after the tournament. And again, we had to work with the city of New York and the state of New York to make sure our health protocols were buttoned down and perfect to run this tournament. So, uh, Mike, there's been a lot of controversy over crowd noise. Tom Keene has demonstrated uh, his own version of crowd noise. And in tennis, it's polite clapping and, and things like that. Are you just going to have it silent or are you going to uh, engage in some sort of crowd mm, environment that's manufactured? Personally, I'm a fan of crowd noise. So the more crowd noise we have, the better. But for this year, obviously, without fans on site, We've partnered one of, with one of our partners, IBM, to come up with taking crowd noise from last year. They, ma they run their uh, AI magic to it, and this year it's going to simulate the crowd noise from last year. So we think it's going to be pretty unique versus some of uh, what some of the other sports have done at this point. Mike, how are you going to get America back into tennis? You've got Miss Azarenka of Belarus batting the ball around behind you, making a horrific racket. Her hero, <laughs> Steffi, great. Her hero Steffi Graf, et cetera, et cetera. But there's this crying need to get America re-engaged in what is now an international sport. How do you do it? I couldn't completely agree more. Uh, tennis is uh, so important to U.S., to, to U.S. tennis, we have to get it going. But what I'm excited about, in a strange way, the pandemic could be what Billie Jean King and Bobby Riggs were for tennis in the 70s. The pandemic could be... Uh, in what way? So we discussed some statistics fact that tennis participation in the U.S. for entry-level players has doubled in the last three months. So if you think about it, when you were in quarantine, you didn't get any exercise, you didn't socialize with anyone, and you didn't have really a lot of intellectual stimulation. As you go out to tennis courts, you can have all those benefits. Uh, we saw mass merchant tennis racket sales for entry-level tennis rackets nearly double in the last three months. So we see tennis coming out of this potentially uh, with a big boom again. Well, Mike, to that point, have you seen a pretty big financial hit from the lack of live games and, and, and games that could be broadcast? Or are you seeing actually a boom on the other side because of the ability to do this sport uh, with some social distancing? Yeah, I mean, as far as the industry, it's coming back strong after being shut down for about 60, 90 days. And as I mentioned, entry-level tennis is where it's really taking off. Specific to the USDA, it is a challenge this year. Without fans, uh, our revenue, our net income, I should say, will be down about 80%. So it's, it's a big hit for us this year. But even with that, we've had some reserves, fortunately, in our lines of credit. We're able to continue and still offer pretty equivalent prize money to last year and keep the operation yeah. going. 